And Tuflau, he was lost, he knew that. Either the building was much bigger than it looked, or he was now on some wide underground level without having gone down any steps. Or, as he was beginning to suspect, the inner dimensions of the place disobeyed a fairly basic rule of architecture by being bigger than the outside. And why all these strange lights? They were eight-sided crystals set at regular intervals in the walls and ceiling, and they shed a rather unpleasant glow that didn't so much illuminate as outline the darkness. And whoever had done those carvings on the wall, Tuflower thought charitably, had probably been drinking too much for years. On the other hand, it was certainly a fascinating building. Its builders had been obsessed with the number eight. The floor was a continuous mosaic of eight-sided tiles. The corridor walls and ceilings were angled to give the corridors eight sides if the walls and ceilings were counted, and, in those places where part of the masonry had fallen, Tuflower noticed that even the stones themselves had eight sides. I don't like it, said the picture imp from his box around Tuflower's neck. Oh, why not? inquired Tuflower. It's weird. But you're a demon. Demons can't call things weird. I mean, what's weird to a demon? Oh, you know, said the demon cautiously, glancing around nervously and shifting from claw to claw. Things. Stuff. Tuflower looked at him sternly. What things? The demon coughed nervously. Demons do not breathe. However, every intelligent being, whether it breathes or not, coughs nervously at some time in its life. And this was it as far as the demon was concerned. Oh, things, it said. Evil things, things we don't talk about, is the point I'm broadly trying to get across, Master. Tooflower shook his head wearily. I wish Rincewind was here. He'd know what to do. Him, sneered the demon. Can't see a wizard coming here. They can't have anything to do with the number eight. The demon slapped a hand across his mouth guiltily. Tooflower looked up at the ceiling. What was that? Didn't you hear something? Me? Here? No, not a thing, the demon insisted. It jerked back into its box and slammed the door. Tooflower tapped on it, and the door opened a crack. It sounded like a stone moving, he explained. The door banged shut, and Tooflower shrugged. The place is probably falling to bits, he said to himself and stood up. I say, he shouted, is anybody there? Air, 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 replied the dark tunnels. Hello, he tried, low, low, low. I know there's someone here, I just heard you playing dice. Ice, ice, ice. Look, I had just... Two flowers stopped. The reason for this was the bright point of light that had popped into existence a few feet from his eyes. It grew rapidly, and after a few seconds was the tiny bright shape of a man. At this stage it began to make a noise, or rather, Tuflower started to hear the noise it had been making all along. It sounded like a slither of a scream, caught in one long instant of time. The iridescent man was doll-sized now, a tortured shape tumbling in slow motion while hanging in midair. Tooflower wondered why he had thought of the phrase, a slither of a scream, and he began to wish he hadn't. It was beginning to look like Rincewind. The wizard's mouth was open and his face was brilliantly lit by the light of, what, strange suns? Tooflower found himself thinking, suns men don't usually see, he shivered. Now the turning wizard was half man sized. At that point the growth was faster. There was a sudden crowded moment, a rush of air. An explosion of sound. Rincewind tumbled out of the air, screaming. He hit the floor hard, choked, then rolled over with his head cradled in his arms and his body curled up tightly. When the dust had settled, Tooflower reached out gingerly and tapped the wizard on the shoulder. The human ball rolled up tighter. It's me, explained Tooflower helpfully. The wizard unrolled a fraction. What? he said. Me. In one movement, Rincewind unrolled and bounced up in front of the little man. His hands gripped his shoulders desperately. His eyes were wild and wide. Don't say it! Don't say it and we might get out! Get out? How did you get in? Don't you know? Don't say it! Tooflower backed away from this madman. Don't say it! Don't say what? The number! Number! said Tooflower. Hey, Rincewind! Yes! The number between seven and nine. Four plus four. What? Eight? 
Rincewind's hands clapped over the man's mouth. Say it, and we're doomed. Just don't think about it, right? Trust me. I don't understand, wailed Two Flower. Rincewind relaxed slightly, which was to say that he still made a violin string look like a bowl of jelly. Come on, he said. Let's try to get out, and I'll try to tell you. As many of us who are interested in tabletop role-playing games, I have read a lot of books over the years. But there was one series that I have never read. Not any of them, and they were from a huge series, really. That was Terry Pratchett's Discworld. I had heard of them. I was very aware of them. Even knew some of the stuff about them, like the turtle. But I had never read a single volume. It's in one of the most difficult subclasses of the genre that of comedy. A regular average fantasy novel might still find an audience, even if it's not great. But comedy is harder. If it is average, it will do poorly, and then what is funny is dependent on individual taste. So the hope is to hit as many points that enough people will find the humour funny. I struggled a little with the first third of this book. I tried to treat the book like I would The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy a series which I am in love with, and I think overall Terry Pratchett has done that for the fantasy genre. I have a few reservations, and the gags I enjoyed the most are those that reminded me in the delivery to Hikers ones, but both series do stand by themselves. I think this is probably not his best book. There is a lot that has to get done in this volume. There is a whole bunch of exposition and world building. You can't just read and chill. You also need to learn, as some of it is important. That part of most books is, I think, the hardest slog. So as this is the first book in his world, so he has to include all of that. That also means he was probably playing with the setting he was creating and might not have had all of it sorted out in his head. So it feels a mix of defined and vague, but not so much vague for mysteries, but vague because he hasn't decided it out yet. Rincewind is also not the most likable character in the beginning, which is the point though, so it's not totally a fault which is not something that might gel with everyone. I feel he does mellow a little over time, though it is not a great character development. The characters are sort of interesting in that it plays with a lot of the normal ideas of fantasy fiction, which is where a lot of the funny moments do lie, though the problem is possibly that all the characters exist as vehicles for the gags and setting rather than being independent characters. The humour, when it works best, is when you are expecting one thing and then suddenly it goes in a different direction. Comedy is about misdirection a lot like magic is, so it works sort of well. But having said that, it does make them satire, which doesn't always age as well as ones that are just funny. There were some things I found very funny, but they were taken from our world and put into a fantasy setting. And while it did work in the moment, as time went on, they had less lasting appeal, as some of the other gags. The luggage is one of the gags I liked long term, because it stands by itself as being humorous. This is book one of Discworld, and if I was a kid, I might not have gone to book two. There is some great things, but it also feels like he wasn't sure if it was going to be a series. Some of the book feels like it reflects that. However, for all its faults, I am happy to have picked it up now, and if this is the worst book and I found it okay, then the others will be even better. Recommended. Provisionally. <laughs>